بلد هالوين In this new stereo production of Abelard and Eloise by Ronald Miller, Peter Abelard is played by Richard Bryars and Eloise by Hannah Gordon. Gilles de Vin by Clive Morton and the Abbess of Argenté by Mary Morris. When the play begins, the two lovers have both taken holy orders. They can no longer express their true feelings for each other, but they can never forget why they first fell in love 15 years before. Exerge Domine Adjuba Nos et Libera Nos Procta Nomen Tuum. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Reverend Mother, beloved sisters in Christ, who have made the long, hard journey across the plains of France to this, our Abbey of the Paraclete, Having been cruelly and wrongfully dispossessed of your convent in Argentoy, we, your brothers in Christ, do herewith freely, joyfully, and with love surrender to you this, our Abbey, with the prayer that you may here find a refuge and a place of peace. And we do name you, Reverend Mother, beloved sister whose piety humility and devotion to God are unexampled first abbess of the paraclete for as long as you shall live this we do in charity before God and in the name of his holiness Pope Innocent the second given under his hand on the 28th of November in the year of our Lord 1131 and now let us pray in silence. I've never been very interested in God. These lovely empty rituals mean less to me than one man's glance. A single touch of hands. Peter. Peter Abelard, who art here beside me. Hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done on earth. On earth. Or what else is there? And may thy humble servants, Lord, proclaim the truth of thy gospel, which says, Love not the world, neither the things in the world. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Is this the end of our story? Can it be that we who have known the warmth and sweetness of each other's bodies and endured the agony of separation have come at last together only to part again? Peter, oh my darling, love me, love me, stay with me. I think of you always, Peter, at mass when prayer should be purest and alone at night. Peter, in bed, sometimes the very movements of my body. I know it's obscene. I know that I should tremble at what I've done. I only know that I long for what I lost. Oh, God! I don't belong in this spider's web of a life with its panic fears, its caution, its obsequiousness. I don't belong. You know I don't belong. I'm 32. A young woman, still young and full of life. They think me chaste, God. They call me holy. They see what I do. They can't see what I think. One name only echoes in this soul. One name. Since I first saw him 15 years ago. Abelard. Abelard. Not yours, God. Oh, God, not yours. Abelard. 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 Abelard.
No, gentlemen, no more speeches. Oh. I'm sorry, but two lectures a day is quite enough. Besides, I'm dry. Master, what's your opinion about... I'm the... also hungry, and when the body calls, the mind must wait. Thank you for the ride. <laughs> Just one question, Master. Yes? Should a priest marry? Yes, yes. I thought it was philosophy we were studying, gentlemen. Oh, yes, sir, but philosophically speaking, sir, <laughs> the tonsure being a symbol of continence, well, you are an expert, aren't you, sir? On priests or marriage? On continence. You being a member of the celibate community, sir, and, well, I was wondering whether... Uh, tell me, Alain, which are you planning to enter first, the church or matrimony? <laughs> <laughs> it's not Alain, sir. It's Canon Everard. Everard? Canon Everard's married his housekeeper, sir. Then, Philippe, I suggest you take your question to the canon. Or, better still, look up your Theophrastus. He's excellent on marriage in general and wives in particular. Good day, gentlemen. <laughs> well, then, but briefly, no yoke bears heavier on a man than marriage. To feed a poor wife is a burden. To support a rich one, torment. Yes. <laughs> but if she's beautiful, men run after her. And if she's ugly, she runs after men. <laughs> <laughs> so that a man has either to keep what everyone wants or what no one wants. In short, says Theophrastus, a life devoted to the study of truth can't be shared with a woman. It's too exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> so if you would serve philosophy, gentlemen, don't take a wife. Get a good servant. <laughs> <laughs> or a good mistress. Oh, yes. <laughs> no, Gerard, no. If you must love, love reason. Quicken dead minds. If you love reason, probe, challenge, question the unquestionable. And if you love me, for God's sake, go home and let me have my dinner. <laughs> oh, yes, good night, good master. Good night, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Excuse me, master. Yes. Well, a new face. What's your name, boy? Robert, sir. Robert de Montbossier. Student? Novice monk. I trust the course is proving instructive. The greatest experience of my life. Through your eyes, it, it's a new world. I'm flattered. But uh, tell me, boy, do you always swallow what your teacher tells you? It depends on the teacher. Abelard is the greatest teacher in all France. In all Europe? He alone teaches the faith of reason. He alone offers a coherent view of God. He alone heats the soul and lights the mind. He alone shares... Yes, quite, quite. Of course, it's uh, conceivable, though naturally improbable, that he could, just once in a while, be wrong. Oh, no, sir. Never, not Abelard. I'm bound to say I agree with you. Nevertheless, little monk, I have a shock for you. Abelard is not God. Sometimes I think so. Yes, I thought you did, you blasphemous pup. But... Not God, Robert. The best available alternative, possibly, in fact, almost certainly, but not God. <laughs> Don't get up, Gilles. I wasn't intending to. Sciatica. I thought it was better. Uh, uh, suppose you've come for your dinner. <laughs> Help yourself, I've just finished. Well, since you pressed me. Uh, my man, Gibert, made me an omelette. Uh, the grease stood on it in flakes. Uh, I don't know why his food always tastes so foul. He washes the platters, even the pots. But does he wash the cloth that washes the pots? <laughs> There's no flavor quite like it. <laughs> uh, it's lack of concentration, I think. His mind is on women. Mm. This chicken is delicious. Yeah, from my cousin, the abbot of Argentine. Mm. Why do nuns always have the best poultry? <laughs> Plump white flesh. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's a pleasure to feed you, Peter. Not only because you eat like a hungry hawk, but because, like me, you're a sensualist. God forbid. It's true. Uh, By the way, Fulbert's niece is back from the convent. Fulbert has relatives. I always thought he happened spontaneously. <laughs> There was a brother killed in the Crusades. He sired a daughter. She borrows my Homer. Odd taste for a girl. Uh -huh. Eloise has a mind. One reason among many why our uncle dotes on her. Does he? Incestuously. My dear Peter. Uh, I suppose not. Tedious old sheep. You've said that, I think, about every one of our canons, barring myself. Well, so they are. Sheep. Every one of them browsing over the same close-bitten pastures with their saint this saith that and saint that saith the other and saint the other saith something else. As if one couldn't prove anything and deny it and prove it back again. Out of Augustine alone. One day I'll do it just to show them. Do what? Well, I'll smash the whole blind system of theology and substitute... Master Peter Abelard? No, not that, not that. 
but a reasonable soul. Augustine said, a man should serve the understanding of things. I'll be content if when I'm dead someone says that about me. That's why my students like me, you know. There's a natural, reasonable soul in most things. When they're young, I can do what I please with them. The young? Yeah. But have a care for the sheep, Peter. Old teeth still bite. Ah, oh. there you are, Canon Sheer. All is in order. All is in order. Is Eloise not here yet? Not yet. Oh, Master Peter. An honor, sir. An honor as always. Yes, yes, indeed. I sent my niece to the library for a... You are not dressed. Not dressed? Am I naked? Kind of fool, not sir? dressed. Not dressed for the deprivation. Deprivation? Yes. Yes, yes. The deprivation of Canon Everard. Oh, yes. Well, hurry, Devon. We don't want to be late. It promises to be something of an occasion. You may go your way, as fool, well. You won't get a foot of me into the cathedral tonight. What? A priest is a servant of God. Thou canst not serve God and woman. You hear that, Peter? Fulbert has on earth the 11th commandment. <laughs> you, you mock me, Gilles. Ah, there, there. You're a good fellow, Fulbert. Mm. A thorn in the flesh of the unrighteous. But I will not go to your entertainment. Oh. Uh, I, I like a friend to sit with. Oh, Skybolard. Perhaps he'll go with you and hold your hand. Master Peter. Oh, it would be a considerable honor. I'm in need of a friend. It's Everard, I think, who needs the friend. Mm. I'll see you then. Uh, uh, why wouldn't he walk with me? Why, why didn't he wait? Oh, I must go. Mm. And I'm to make your excuses then, Jeeve? Tell them that I have a profound sciatica. Have you? No, but I had yesterday. Ah. Oh, Eloise. Where is the girl? I should be late. I sent her to the library for a copy of The Fathers on illicit union within the church in case our brother contests the decision. You understand? Yeah. But it shouldn't take her more than five minutes. Oh, oh there you are, child. Where on earth have you been? I'm sorry, Uncle. I, I ran both ways all the way. Well, in that case, I can't imagine why it took you so long. Now, you are I'll go straight home, sweetheart. Yes, Uncle. I'll leave home with me, Fulbert, while you're in chapter. There's a copy of the inscription for the lapidaries to make, and I, I've got gout in my thumb. You, you think the girl writes well, is she? She has the best clerk script in Paris. Mm, beauty. And a brain to match. Uh -huh. A rare combination for some unfortunate man. No. Eloise is mine. And God's. I notice you place God below the salt. Hmm. Hmm. I will come back for her when chapter is over. And then I can tell you, Canon, all about it. I can scarcely contain myself, Canon. Hmm. Oh, and full there. Hmm? I would come with you to the stoning of Stephen, if I had the courage. Not Stephen. Everard. <laughs> Poor old man. He's getting old. Five minutes then? Yes, Uncle. Ah, yes. <laughs> oh, Eloise, you're the only contemporary I have. Oh, I think so, too. Where are the inscriptions? An excuse for your company. Here. Try this wine. It's cold. Green that well water. Uh, Yet it warms like the sun. Uh, Where does it come from? Moselle. Yeah. Huh? What will become of Everard? Was he wrong to marry? Canonically, yes. Then is marriage a sin? Not a sin, only a mistake. <laughs> That's why the canonists regard it so gravely. One can be absolved of a sin, but there's no absolution for a mistake. But Everard, he was such a good face, and, and, and she... I saw his wife this morning standing at her door all sudden with crying and frightened. God comfort her in her distress. My uncle says you voted against Everard in chapter. And should again tomorrow. But why, Gilles? You of all people. You're not a hypocrite. Well, I am. Officially, I'm a canon of Notre Dame, and I have the morals, and what's worse, 
the appearance of Silenus. At least you make no pretense of goodness like the others, yet, and yet you condemn Debra. Canon law condemned him, as it would condemn the archbishop if charges against him were brought and proved. And marriage, remember, is easier to prove than uh, other forms of depravity. Is that how you think of marriage? As a form of depravity? Marriage is a compromise with the flesh. The church in its wisdom has given its blessing to that compromise, speaking of a certain spiritual union of which I have seen little and desire less. To me, the root of marriage is the satisfying of the lust of the flesh. Then love is lust. Its root is lust. Love. You find that horrible? Yes. The rose is lovelier than its root, Eloise. Even so, marriage is the effort to make that permanent which is by nature transient. The quidquam in vain. Oh, so soon? That was a swift stoning. What happened? Did they all throw at once? You've uh, not met, I think. Eloise, the man who has your generation by the ears, Master Peter Abelard. I've just come from your uncle. He fainted in chapter. Oh, There's no cause for concern. He's been fasting, I think. He asked that you should go to him. Oh, yes, of, of course. I'll see you there safely. No, I... I... Thank you. I, I'll be quick on the Seventeen, they say. Not much color. I like a white-faced wench myself. The eyes show better so. Why do fools say black as night? There's more color in the night sky than ever there is at noonday. Stars, too. You're not listening, Peter. Yes, I'm listening. Seventeen, you see. She's very young. When summer on is stealing, and come the gracious prime, and Phoebus high in heaven. Who's there? Oh, it's you, bear. Got any money? Is it money tonight, Elise? Money every night, dear. I'm a working girl. I've got a new song. Can't eat songs, dear. You like the one I sang last week, remember? And then, afterwards, oh, Elise, it was so wonderful. Yes. Well, you got the better of my good nature. There's been a change of policy. Uh, no, wait. Please, listen. When summer on is stealing, and come the gracious prime, and Phoebus high in heaven, and fled the rhyme with love of one young maiden my heart hath ta'en its wound and manifold the grief that i in love have found that i in love have found who wrote that i did liar well it's one of master abelard's actually one of his best don't you think not bad. Can I come in now? There. One kiss. Now go on home like a good little boy. But at least we have I said go home. Oh, God, please, please. I, I must. I must. <laughs> No free rides. I'm a business girl. How much? How long? All night. <laughs> All night, Elise. You bring me a hundred gold besos, you can have me for a night. A hundred gold besos? Of course, if I'm not worth oh, it. Oh, yes. Oh, God, yes, you're worth it. But where am I going to get a hundred besos? That's your problem, isn't it, dear? And look, she bear, don't bother me again, not unless you've solved it. All right. Oh, Elise, for God's sake. Oh, go home. <laughs> I'll get it. A hundred gold besos. I don't know how, but I'll get it. Once you've had a woman, well, you know how it is. No, I don't know how it is, you do. Oh, uh, no. That's right, Master. No, you would. But I can imagine the hunger. The hunger for love. Oh, that's it, sir. That's it exactly. I'll save. That's it. I'll start saving. Well, uh... Here's something to open your account. Oh, thanks, Master Abelard. That's sympathetic. 
a scullion and a harlot. And yet, when she took him in her arms and their mouths met, it seemed to me as if suddenly all the things that I contend for, books, philosophy, dialectics, the whole spectrum of the intellectual life, as if suddenly they were nothing. It was as though, for a moment in time, Harlot and Louts had immortality. Can you believe that, Gilles? Without difficulty. And then? And then she slapped his face and shut the door on him. <laughs> yes, that's the way of it. Poor Gilbert. By the way, Fulbert says you can take him with you. Yvonne, uh, that is cook, will be happy to feed you. But naturally, you must have a man about you to fetch and carry. What did you say? Fulbert wants you to go and live with him. Fulbert wants me? <laughs> the picture of stupefaction. Now, why? Why? Good God, man! He was always by way of regarding you as a as a demigod. And since you carried him home when he fainted in chapter... I did not. I gave him an arm. Uh, horizontal or vertical, the fact remains he blushes and stammers whenever he speaks of you. Is the man out of his wits? I'm 37 and she's... A she's... school girl. Yes, I reminded him of the fact that he spoke much of your reputation for chastity. You would, it seems, be doing him the greatest imaginable honor if you would consent to live under his roof. Honor? His word. He used it at least three times. Well, is it to be yes or no? Eloise has a good mind, Master Peter. A logical mind and an excellent memory. Whatever you teach her, she'll retain. Stores it all up here, she does. Like a... Um, whatever animal never forgets. <laughs> I forget. <laughs> Henry's! Come along up, my dear. Oh, she'll prove an apt pupil. A worthy pupil, I have no doubt. If not, you must punish her. Yes, indeed. A touch of the birch on the buttocks is good for all of us, especially the young. Uncle? <laughs> Isn't that so, my dear? Yes, Uncle. <laughs> Mind you, the nuns, they thought highly of her. A devout girl, pious and virtuous. Neither the desires nor the vanities of this world could turn her from her studies. A natural religious, I should say. <laughs> oh, but I'm wasting your, your precious time. Master Peter, I place my niece in your hands, confidently, without reserve. You are a great man of letters. My house is honored. Yes. Yes, indeed. Sit down. Did the nuns beat you? No. I think they preferred to beat themselves. They say it sharpens the soul. I don't think it would sharpen mine. And in fact, I'm sure it wouldn't. But then I've never tried it. No doubt that will come later. You like Homer, I believe. I've read the Iliad and the Odyssey. What did you make of them? Oh, Homer... Homer was inspired, wasn't he? I doubt if the point has been disputed. Is that all you have to say about Homer? Weren't his poems the dawn of reason? Not the dawn, but a beacon fire, the cry of the watchman, the dawn is coming. It was 400 years later when Buddha appeared in India, Confucius in China, Plato and Aristotle in Greece, that man began at last to break the chains that bind him to the animal. The heat is stifling, do you mind? I love the breeze from the river. What Latin have you? I've studied the fathers. Jerome, Gregory, Augustine, some of it, a little Seneca. Seneca? I read Medea at night with my uncle. You're 17? And a half. And you spend your evenings reading Seneca with your uncle? Well, he's not too tired. He often is, which is why I suggested... Oh, you see, the house was too large for just the two of us and Yvonne in the kitchen. And when Gilles Devan happened to mention that you were unhappy in your lodgings... Uh, do, I... do I understand that... That my coming here was your idea. I'm sure you'll find it more comfortable. Did you know that you can see four of the city gates from this window? And the same valley away to the right, stretching for, for more than 20 miles. 
Oh, Paris is so lovely that sometimes the sheer beauty of it catches the breath. There's something the matter. I'm sorry. You were saying? Just that Paris is beautiful. There's a sort of inner radiance. Yes. There's also a stench of foul water and the drains defy description. We'll start with Virgil. But not now, in a week. Two weeks, a month, perhaps. If I had time. Now, you understand. I have very little time. The herds and birds of brilliant hue... In furias ignemque ruint. ...are swept with fiery feelings. Passion. Or are swept with passion. Amor omnibus idem. Love is the same for all. Good. That will do for today. But of course that's not true, is it? What is not true? Love is not the same for all. How can it be? You have the advantage of me. To love God, for example, is not the same as to love another human being. Which would you say is the greater love? The nuns would say to love God. What do you say? If you have the smallest doubt about the answer, you should certainly think twice before taking the veil. Ta taking the veil? But I never considered such a step. Well, I understood from your uncle. Oh, no, no, you mustn't... You mustn't believe all my uncle says... I have no vocation. None, whatever. Taking the veil, I couldn't. I, I couldn't be happy. To me, it would be like being locked in a cupboard. I could never be a nun. Never. Oh, the priesthood? No. I'm too much of a rebel. Reason can't breathe in the cloister. But there's no advancement for a man outside the church. And you'd soon be a bishop and then... And then an archbishop, and then a cardinal, and, and then... His holiness? <laughs> Why not? You have the hair cut. <laughs> no, I'm serious. <laughs> Didn't Plato say it would be well for that state whose king was a philosopher? Yes, he did. So I... what of Christendom, if a philosopher were pope? Oh, with your intellect, your, your energy, your sway over people, I, I know you could reach the highest office. I'm content to teach. Is that what you've most wanted all your life? To be a teacher. I think what I most wanted was to be free. Open to the world. At any rate, that was why I refused to be knighted and go and play the squire at Kiesel. What happened? My father sent my brother instead. Was he furious? <laughs> I never had a hard word from my father. He was more of a saint than any man I ever knew. It was mother who gave us what chiding we got, which was little enough. She took the veil at Poitiers two months after he entered at saint savin It's not the worst end. To have served in the wars taken a wife, begotten children, and then at the last to take down one sail and ride at anchor in God. Could that be the way for you? I hate to be tied. The light's going. I'll get the candles. No, no, no. No, don't. It, it's such a night. Let's just wait and watch the darkness. I never knew my mother. Tell me about yours. Oh, she had the most beautiful eyes. Not just lovely. Loveliness is an easy thing. Most women have something of it when they're young. But beauty, one perhaps two in a generation. And are they happy? Happy? What do they want with happiness? They know ecstasy. Happiness. It's the dog asleep in the sun. Eloise, I, I apologize for receiving you like you this. You look very handsome, but should you be sitting up? Jean says you're sciatica. I shall die sitting up. Do you want to go away? I need time. Where can I go? It's easy enough. It's the eve of Saint-Michel. I shall send Jean to Argenteuil with an offering for tomorrow's feast and greetings to my cousin the abbess. You can ride pillion behind him 
and come back with him in the evening. Or not. Don't you want to come back? I don't know. I shan't know and, until I've gone. Where's your uncle? At Mass. Run back and get your cloak. What? I shall tell him the sisters were grieved at being neglected all summer and that I urged you to go and make amends. You'll lie for me. Truth has as many coats as an onion, and each one a puzzle when you peel it. Oh, sh- two minutes with you, and nothing matters as much as one thing. Uh, <laughs> oh, God, what is Jesus, Mary, Joseph. What is it? My hip. My hip. God, I forgot. Shall I rub it for you? Rub it? I'd as soon be broken off the wheel. Away with you, girl. Away with you. Wait, wait. Take this wine to the abbess. She's drinking herself to death, but she has my palate. And we'd have the hard to kill. Uh, not sure as you haven't done for this one. Are you sure you wouldn't... Out, not... out, for pity's sake, out! Gloria Patri et Filio et Spiritui Sancto, Sicuderat in principio, et nunc et semper et... Well, it's done. More's the pity. Won't you wish me well? I believe it would be better to wish you a broken neck. <laughs> better a broken neck than broken faith? And that from the master of logic. That from the voice of reason. That from the mind that set the century ablaze. You've had too much trade with words, Peter. Well, there, no matter. Someday, it may be a hundred years from now, it may be two hundred, but someday another will speak of reason as you once did and bring together the whole summa of theology by just such methods as yours. And they will write his name in the calendar of saints and handle his work as if it were the Ark of the Covenant. And where will Abelard be? Smashed, forgotten. A deserter from that little band of immortals who alone give a measure of meaning to man's existence. And for what? A woman. You fool, Peter. You, no, not fool, clown. You naive and total clown. Gilles, thank you for making her my wife. Whom the gods would destroy, they first make sentimental. It shouldn't be like this. All the bells should have rung for us. Peter? Oh, it's you, Robert. He said I could... He offered me the use of his books while he's away. Away? At Liège, the convocation. Oh, I forgot he won't be back till Friday. Friday noon. Oh, God, where are you leading us? You're hurt. Oh, no, just tired. Your cheek's bruised and swollen, your arm's bleeding. Oh, it's nothing, I, I fell. There's a contusion, I'll get some water. No, thank you, I, I must be out of... Paris before it's light. You'd better let me. You can't go like that. With everyone staring and pointing. I'm used to it. Pull your sleep back. It's nothing. I tell you, I... say. Why are you doing this for me? Robert? Not for you. It wasn't a fall. You're Peter's friend. He trusts you. Master Alberic came to the house. Yes? Alberic of Reims, I... I'd never seen him before. Fat and small eyes peeping. That's right. He, he told my uncle he'd always wanted to see his books, but he didn't come for that. He came to spy. Ah! Sorry. Geoffrey of Chartres was there, too, just, just back from Rome. Nice man. He said something about having more consequence in Rome as, as Peter Abelard's friend than as the bishop-elect of Chartres. And my uncle said that made him proud, as he'd always thought of me as a daughter. And, and to know I was married to so great a man. Married. Yes, a month ago. A month? Oh, I denied it, of course. I, I said I was his mistress. My uncle struck me. He clawed at me. They, they pulled him away, but Alberic had got what he came for. It'll be all over Paris by morning. Do you still want to help me now? It's not safe anymore in my uncle's house. Not, it's not safe in Paris. Look, will you tell Peter I've gone to Argenti, to Sister Godric with the little boy? I'll tell him. Go now, please. Oh. I don't know how to thank you. Don't. Just go. 
You love him too, don't you, very much? Oh, not as I love him, I love <laughs> Exactly as you love him. Exactly. Yes. Holy Sylvester. Holy Gregory. Intercede for her soul. Holy Martin. Intercede for her soul. Holy Alexis. Intercede for her soul. Holy Magdalene. Intercede for her soul. Holy Felicitas. Intercede for her soul. Go forth, Christian and Holy Spirit, from this world. Go in peace in the name of angels and archangels, in the name of principalities and powers and all the strength of heaven, in the name of cherubim and seraphim, in the name of the whole human race which is written in the book of life. Let the angels come and meet thee on thy way and bring thee into the city. Lord Jesus Christ, receive the soul of thy servant, Godric. Amen. Amen. Four of you will go into the chapel and take the place of those now keeping watch. Gisella. Yes, Mother. Adair. Yes, Mother. Constance. Mother. Eloise, Godric was your friend. Let you be the fourth. Yes, Mother. Ave Maria Purissima. Conceive with us, yes. Dear friend, intercede for this old sinner. Reverend Mother, Reverend Mother. Mary Ella. Yes, Mother. When may we run, Mary Ella? To assist her to death, but from a fire, Reverend Mother. Is yet another of our community in extremis? No, Reverend Mother. Are we on fire, child? I, it's not. There's a man. Who is it? Who is it who died here? In God's name. One of our sisters. But who? Who? Godric. May her soul be blessed. Godric. Godric. Oh, forgive me. I rode through the village. They said there'd been a death up at the convent. No one knew who it was. Godric. I'm sorry. She was her friend. Mariella, go to the chapel and call Eloise. You will take her place. At once, Mother. And walk, Mariella. Yes, Mother. Sit down and calm yourself a moment, Master Peter. You know me? Taking the veil does not necessarily make one half-witted. Drink this. Thank you, Noah. Drink it, man. You look like a sepulcher. Pete. Remember, child, this is your home for as long as you need us. I thought it was you who was dead. My darling. The sexton is digging Godric's grave. Come here. At least let me feel you near me. I daren't be near you, Peter. I, I daren't. I was away when you needed me. He struck you. It's not myself I'm afraid for, Peter. It's you. Don't go back to Paris. My dear girl, what possible harm could he do me? I don't know. I, I, I think he's mad. But, Peter, don't go back. You know I must. Yes, you must. Now it begins. Oh, they're great on fate in Donegal. What? Peter, I've been thinking. I must stay here now for a while. I shall ask Reverend Mother if I can wear novice's dress. No, what? no, 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 please, my darling, just listen. We'll let it be known that in a year or two, I shall take the veil. Elvis, I... Dear sweet Peter, can you see me as a nun? But if we can make people believe it, the talk will die. Now, look... The marriage would be annulled, wouldn't it, if I joined the sisterhood? Oh, my darling, you're looking at me as if I were a ghost. It's only a tale to, to give the lie to my uncle, as if any vows on earth could keep me from you. Swear you never, not even a novice, not even a lay sister. You swear! You no occasion, they wouldn't even accept me. Swear it! I swear, I swear, I swear, I swear! You mustn't, you mustn't touch me here. Oh, God, it's not here. Not here, Peter. Oh, this. Oh, this. A hundred gold bits. She there? Count for back. Uh, wait one minute. She bear for one gold coin. That song she bear about the summer coming in and the young wench who used to sing it in my house. If I remember rightly, it was one of your masters, one of... Peter Abelard's. I believe so, Your Reverence. And they tell me it is still very popular. Well, it's a love song. We all like songs about love. Love, yes. If she would once have pity and take me. He took her from me, you know. Why did he take her from me? Hmm? 
He's tired of her now. He's flung her on the ash heap at Argentoy. Is he going to make a nun of her? Does he think if he makes a nun of her, he can break the marriage? And be priested? I never heard the master had any notion of orders. Why else should he send her to Argentoy? She's going about in her grave clothes, all but the veil. And they'll put that on her shortly, and then he'll be satisfied. He'll take his vows of chastity and be on his way up the ecclesiastical ladder. Are you... Are you fond of your master, she bear? Yes, you're a... So am I. That's why I mean to save his soul. Help me. Between us, she bear, we'll win him back for God and beat the devil, and Holy Mother Church will be mocked no more. No, no, drag the scapers into the gutter. I must be going now, Your Reverend. How much do you think there is there? Fifty. A hundred. A hundred gold lesser. I'll be going, sir. Tell me. Is the door at the foot of your master's stairs locked to that? I must go, sir, really. Suppose you come down the stairs and unlock the door and found this on the steps. What would you do? I, I don't know. Yes, you do. You'd pick it up and be off into the night and enjoy yourself. Of course, you would leave the door open, wouldn't you? No. Yes, you would. So that you could get back in. <laughs> Master Fulpin, you wouldn't murder him? No. No, I hope he'll live long and chaste the way I would have him. Of course, he won't be a priest. It takes a whole man to be a priest. But he'll live the holier for it. Didn't our Lord say some have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. I doubt Master Peter would ever do that. But I know those who will do it for him. He's a proud man, Peter, but how proud. I'll break his pride and do his soul a service. Sing, Gilbert, sing for another gold coin. Down from the branches fall. It's me, Elise. I've got the hundred gold pesos. Let me in. Oh, no. I have, I tell you. Let me in. Let me in, Elise. Go home, she bear, like a good lad. Come back tomorrow. I'm with Alain tonight. <laughs> tomorrow? I could be dead tomorrow. Elise. Oh, shut the window. I can pay. I can pay. Elise. Cry, man, you haven't lost it. I'll help you pick it up. <laughs> Go. Where did you get this? <laughs> Gold. <laughs> he said gold. <laughs> the cannon. Cannon? Which cannon? <laughs> Why aren't you at Master Avalon? <laughs> You cannot full bear give you this money. What for? What for? I didn't do it. I only opened the door. Just the door, that's all. I didn't do it. Oh, dear God, no. Sweet God in heaven, no. Master Gilles? I suppose they've told you that I'm going to live. What day is it? The first of October. Three days. And on the third day. Have they begun to joke yet? Not yet. Would God I had died for thee, O Absalom, my son, my son. I was lost for you, Gilles. I was sick in bed when I heard. And then I was drunk. Yes, they told me. But there's nothing they haven't told me. She bear and the old man, too, dragged from sanctuary. 
flesh for flesh, obscenity for obscenity. I'm glad you came before they moved me. Where? To Saint-Denis. If you want monks nursing, you'll be quarter at Saint-Germain. You see, I'm taking the vows at Saint-Denis. You can't. They're making an exception in my case. It will only be a nominal novitiate. Handsome of them, I thought. If I had the power, Peter, I'd put you under lock and key till God was pleased to restore you to your senses. Uh, having only just removed them, I doubt he'll do that in a hurry. Do sit down. I can only see your belly, and I prefer your face. Of course, I don't want to be a stupid, sublimating little monk. I've no vocation. I'd rather continue to teach as I've always done, but that's over. You say this because you're sick. When your strength comes back, when you're your own man again... I'm nobody's man, as you so delicately put it, or ever will be. Your body's mutilated, not your mind. You'll see. Suppose you don't make up your mind now that, that you go for a while to La Palais, to Eloise. For God's sake! It has to be. I think I've always known it. I knew it riding down to Brittany with her. With her. And before that, when I went to Fulbert and said I'd marry her. And before that, long ago. What's to become of Eloise? She'll take the veil at Argentoy. What? That is it, they'll have her. She'll need to convince your cousin, the abbess, she has a vocation. She still has all her faculties, there should be no problem. Uh, but she has no vocation. Neither have I. What's to stop her going to your sister with the boy? Because if you must have the truth, I couldn't stand it. Because I couldn't endure even to see her kiss my brother-in-law because I'm jealous of every man that ever looks at her. Jealous, Christ. There's always been jealousy. And that was when I was a man myself. And now... <gasps> Forgive me. God bless you, Gilles. But I must go my own way. One goes through life, chewing the sweet and spitting out the bitter. And then at an age when one might reasonably think all heat of blood were past, to have the heart torn out of you for two creatures nearly half a century away. Amelard. Eloise. It came as something of a surprise to me to hear that you wished to enter the religious life. When I granted your request to wear novice's dress, I understood it was simply a matter of convenience. You understand that we must be satisfied your vocation is genuine. But there are certain questions I'm bound to ask you. Yes, Reverend Mother. Very well. This is your own unprompted desire. Yes, Mother. You are aware of its meaning. You've considered carefully. Yes, Mother. When was your vocation revealed to you? Was it recently? Yes. Suddenly? Yes. What caused it? Why do you think God has chosen you to be his handmaiden? No one can explain God's grace, Reverend Mother. But can whoever receives it doubt that he or she has been led by the hand? You are married. You have a son of nine months. You realize if you are received, the child can no longer remain here with you. Yes, Mother. What will become of him? He will be adopted by my... by my sister-in-law. You will miss your son? Yes. Yes, I shall miss him. And your husband? And your beloved husband? And my beloved husband? And yet there's no doubt in your mind that your renunciation of your son, your husband, your married life, and all that goes with it is a manifestation of God's grace. What else could it be? Eloise. You loved a man. You have a child by him. These ties are strong. They come in the night and call like sirens. Long after one thinks them forgotten, they return in dreams to stir the flesh and distract the spirit. Memory is all insinuating, all pervasive. How will you conquer memory, child? I... I will pray for strength. Then you fear its power. Yes. No, I... I was always unhappy about my marriage. As you know, my son was born out of wedlock. It preyed on my mind. I'm sure your marriage soothed your conscience. No. Well, why not? Because... Be, because I wished I... 
I longed only to be a bride of Christ. I see. And this wish, this longing, it transcends all things. Yes. All earthly love. Yes. All carnal desire. Yes. It is your reason for asking to be received. Your only reason. Mother, are all these questions... Your reason, child, your only reason. My only reason. You long for God with all your heart and with all your mind and with all your soul. Yes, yes. You realize that once taken, your decision is irrevocable. Yes. That you will no longer be able to come and go as you please. Yes. That this time, once the convent gates close behind you, they close forever. Yes. That you will be lost to the world. Yes. You understand these things. I understand. And to be so lost is your resolve. Yes. Your aspiration. Yes. Your delight. Yes. Your joy. Yes. 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 Oh, really oh, this life is not for all. Ah, oh, unsparing, pitiless evening. Without a vacation, it can be a terrible thing. We must be grateful that God's mercy, we have found the truth in time. I've always known the truth. I've always known I had no vacation. So have I, my dear. Help me, Mother. You know I will in any way within my power. Mother, I ask to be received into the sisterhood. Reverend Mother. Don't call me that, Peter. I'm not Reverend, I'm not a mother except to these weary, overwatched girls. Nothing has changed for me since I was accepted into the order 15 years ago. I train the novices as I was trained. I play the game according to the rules. They say you're a saint. No, you mustn't say that. It's not true. Has it never occurred to you that it may be true, that you may not know it? If I tell you that when I took the veil, I committed myself not to God, but to you in your mutilation, that at no moment in my life did I give myself so passionately to my husband. That it was like a second marriage. That when I lie in my cell, you lie beside me. When I sleep, you sleep with me. When I dream, I dream of your arms holding me. That if you asked me, I would come to you here, now, this moment. If I tell you that the need for loving never stops... Will you believe me? Tell me. Do you believe in God? Do you think there is a God at all? Probably not. Will you pray with me? <laughs> Why not? It's harmless. Let us pray. A brief glimpse in an empty chapel and then goodbye forever. There's nothing to touch God's cruelty, is there? It's quite sublime. Pe Peter. Peter, where are you? Peter. Don't leave me. Peter. 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 I'll write to her. I'll write. There'll be letters. Letters. Can I embrace a letter? Hear its heartbeat, feel its warmth. Can I love a letter? Love God. Love God. My darling, my darling, I would follow him to hell itself if he asked me, but I can't... Can it be the one place she won't follow me is heaven? He doesn't know how it is for me. His God has helped him not to want me. He's maimed in soul as well as body, but I have no... He thinks no... because the body fails, desire fails with it, if only it were true. My Peter, you are everywhere still, everywhere. And God... Nowhere, so what can I expect of God? Expect nothing. Give. And if one has already given... And there's no more oil in the lamp. I know, I know. When I entered Saint Denis, it was to hide my shame. No other reason. I had no vocation either. For months I was sick in mind and body. Oh, sweet body. And then when I could get about, I walked. I tramped ceaselessly day after day. Warm, oh, sweet body in my arms. I walked alone, trying to will myself to God. No blind ecstasy drove me, but every sentence I'd ever written or spoken passed before me like a lifetime to a drowning man. My man. And in a kind of pomp of abnegation, I offered them humbly to God. There is no God. I went on and on and on until my mind was empty, a vacuum. Nothing remained of Abelard. It was the pride of humility, the ceremonial pride of the Roman salute. I waited for some response. There was none. There is no God. Love me. And then one day, 
I was standing looking down at a river, and something in the still shining surface of it reminded me of a day I'd forgotten 30 years before. I'm young, still young and full of life. Love me. As a boy, I'd gone with my father on pilgrimage to St. Gilda's. It was winter and the wind blew, but standing on the cliff, I'd seen a strange silver pathway. I want you, Peter. It swept round the headland and out to sea. There was no ripple on it. I want you now. I need you now. It ran against the tide, directly counter to the waves surrounding it. I want you at mass when prayer should be pure. My father, standing beside me, was so withdrawn that for a time I hesitated to ask him what it was. When I did, he said, it's the will of God. In my cell at night. I had no idea what he meant. In bed, Peter, alone in bed. Standing there, 30 years later, no heavens opened. Sometimes, the very movements of my body. I saw no son of man. I had no vision. In a moment, I felt the blood ebbing from my heart. I thought I was going to die. The moment before the ecstasy. And then it happened. Love's fulfillment. Oh, my darling. With no warmth of contrition, no passion of devotion, stripped of all human emotion, but with every power of my mind, every pulse of my body, I worship God. You found your crutch. I found the rock. Let the tempest come. It will not shake me. My belief is sure. Master, philosopher, man of God, whenever men speak of giants, they'll remember Abelard. If I'm remembered, it will be for this, that I was loved by Eloise. Peter Abelard, my husband. My sister in Christ. 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 My husband. My husband, husband, husband. Peter, where are you? I'm drowning. I'm suffocating in Christ. Let go. You belong to him who has conquered the world. Let go. Peter, for God's sake, come back. I'm so alone. God is with you. There is no God. There is no God. No God. Two shattered lives. God's mercy. Pitiless. Purifying. A scorching fire. Alone. 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 Love him. Love him, love him love as you love me. Love to the furthest reaches of your shadow. Love him. Help me, Peter. Love him. This is your deliverance and mine. Let go. Help me. Love him. Holy Jesus. Must I break my heart to comfort hers? My sister, in your strength, your intercession, your innocence lies what hope I have of heaven. My guilt is in your hands. I don't understand. I don't understand. My hands are fouled beyond redemption, but yours... Pray for me. Save me. Go to God. For me. For me. God knows I would love God for you if I could. Love me for God. I can't. I've tried. I... What did he say? Love me for God. Love me for God. Did she hear? Love him. For God. Dear heaven. Am I his salvation? Did she hear? Peter. Am I your salvation? Peter? Did she hear? Did she hear? Yes. Yes. I heard. My brother. My brother in Christ. My wife. My beloved. Oh, God, if there is a God, come now. On the 21st of April, 1142, at the age of 63, Abelard died and was buried in the crypt of the Abbey of the Paraclete. Twenty-two years later, on the 16th of May, 1164, Eloise died. 
and was buried there also, but not in the same tomb. So they lay for 650 years. In 1814, by order of the government of the day, their remains were carried to the cemetery of Père Lachaise in Paris, where the noblest of the sons and daughters of France are laid to rest. There, their dust was mingled and buried under a stone plinth with the words, Abelard, Eloise, forever one. And there to this day they lie together. In Abelard and Eloise by Ronald Miller, Abelard was played by Richard Bryars, Eloise by Hannah Gordon. Gilles de Van, Clive Morton, the abbess, Mary Morris. Robert, David Timson, Guybert, Kerry Francis. Fulbert, Manning Wilson, Sister Godric, Kathleen Helm, Alice and Mariella, Susan Brown. Laura, Hilda Schroeder, Gisela, Sandra Clark, Constance and Denise, Diana Olson, Bernard of Clairvaux and Philippe, Nigel Graham, Alain, Sean Probert, Gerard and Jean, William Slay. The play was adapted for radio and produced by Martin Jenkins. <laughs>